Hello, and welcome back to Magic Duels for episode three. And again, we will just jump right into it. So in the last one, we did Gideon Jura, just like the one before. And we passed the uh, Kytheon Iora. I still have no idea how to pronounce most of these names. And now we are on... Wait, are all of these? Ah, they are. I just realized all of those are the same name. Well, all right then. Well, Akros has fallen under attack as harpies mercilessly swarm the city's walls. Every able body is needed. You and the other prisoners are released. The city's last hope to beat back the monsters. All right. Seems like we're going to get 30 gold and it just decreased some from there. So let's go ahead and get started. I like the artwork. Very interesting uh, harpy design. Fairly terrifying. Especially with that little teethy scowl right there. Alright, some more training. Looks like we're a little bit older now. You can have multiple creatures grouped together to block a single attacking creature. This is a good way to gang up on a larger threat. Your opponent chooses how the attacking creature deals damage to your blockers. All right. I actually can't remember if that is a part of the cardboard version of the game, like the, the ones with the actual playing cards, if, uh, if you're allowed to do that. But if we are on here, we will definitely Usually, take Usually, an attacking creature will deal all its damage to the creature that blocked it. But a creature with trample can deal its excess damage to the defending player. All right, so it seems we're going to be having to uh, deal with trample on this one. You'll see trample and group blocking in action in this skill quest. To complete it, block the incoming attack and win on your next turn. All right. So it looks like we have Centaur Courser. Is that Courser? Pretty sure. And Vulpine Goliath. I really, really like the artwork. I like that a lot. Trample this creature, blah, blah, blah. Can deal excess damage, uh, excess combat damage to defending player or planeswalker while attacking. All right. So to any of these, this creature can't attack. Okay. Whoa. We're going to wait up here for a second. And so they have a Vulpine as well. And that's not, that is not good because, ah, so we are going to block with multiple creatures. We're going to block with these two. I, I see how it is. And then on the next turn, we are going to attack straight through and attack this one more than likely and deal trample. See, I'm, I, I'm kind of understanding how this is supposed to go. Continue. To block an incoming attack, click and drag one of your creatures to the attacking creature you want to block. Once you've selected all the creatures you want to block with, click Confirm Block. All right, pretty uh, self-explanatory. So we're going to block both of those with those two creatures and we're gonna confirm the block. So we dealt with their uh, Vulpine Goliath. We're going to place a land just for the heck of it. And now we're going to attack with our Vulpine Goliath. Break through this, uh, this block because they're definitely going to block. But those two will end up killing the practice drone, training drone. All right. See, just like before. But we'll go through and two damage will be done to the training drone. Great job. Sorry about those uh, music spikes, guys. It actually gets really, really loud in my headphones as well, so normally not just you. all attacking and blocking creatures deal combat damage at the same time. However, a creature with first strike deals its combat damage first 
before creatures without first strike. This means a creature with first strike can often destroy an enemy creature before that creature gets the chance to hit back. All right. In this skill quest, withstand your opponent's assault and attack on your turn to seal your victory. Okay. So let's see, we have, we have Kindled Fury. Instant, so it's an instant spell. Target creature gets plus one, plus zero, and gains first strike until the end of turn. And let's see, we have Elvish Warrior, which is a two, three. And they have an artifact creature, Juggernaut. Juggernaut attacks each turn if able. Juggernaut can't be blocked by walls. All right. So, it seems as though we are going to block. Hmm. Gains first strike into the end of turns. So we're going to, so that'll make it a three, a three, three. Which means it'll deal damage. And then we will be able to take it out after. Gotcha. All right. Understood. Understood. So we're going to do that. We're going to A timer block. counts down whenever it's your turn to act. If you want to cast an instant, click. So we're, I'm just going to go through that because we already know that from the last uh, episode. So we're going to play this instant and apply it to our Elvish Warrior. So it dealt damage and, and killed the Juggernaut. And now, play a uh, land just for the heck of it. And now we'll attack and deal the two damage necessary to destroy this training drone. Well done. First strike is advantageous on both offense and defense. Definitely. That was actually, I actually really enjoyed that. That kind of uh, displayed the uses of First Strike very, very well. If I think. one of your creatures dies, it's put into your graveyard. Instants and sorceries are also put into your graveyard after you cast them. Other cards can also be put there, such as cards you discard from your hand. Some spells and abilities can bring cards back from your graveyard. To complete this skill quest, Use your graveyard to win this turn. All right, so let's see what we have in our graveyard. We have Lightning Elemental, and it has Haste. This creature can attack and tap as soon as it comes under your control. Okay. And then we have Rise from the Grave. Put target creature card from a, from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. That creature is a black zombie in addition to its other colors and types. Interesting. And do we have, so it needs one of these and then four. So we're going to play this sorcery. Bring that from the grave. Wonderful. And then we can attack. And because this is tapped, it can't do anything. It can't block whatsoever. So we're gonna punch straight through with our four and attack. So attack with all, confirm attack, and we win. Very nice. Just because a card ends up in your graveyard, it doesn't mean that card is no longer of use to you. The color black is especially adept at returning creatures from the graveyard. Indeed. So I hope now we get on to the actual battle. Some abilities trigger whenever something else happens in the game. These are called triggered abilities. For example, many creatures have abilities that trigger when they enter the battlefield. If an ability triggers on an event you can repeat, such as playing a land, you can reap the rewards every time. All right. Complete this skill quest by using triggered abilities to defeat your opponent this turn. Okay, so let's see what we have real quick. 
Whenever another red creature enters the battlefield under your control, Foundry Street Denizen gets plus one plus zero into the end of turn, so it'll make it a plus two. And when Manic Vandal, Vandal enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. So let's see what target artifact they have. Artifact creature, so we'll be able to destroy that. And considering this is tapped, it is no use to uh, block us. So we're going to play. We're going to destroy that. And now we are going to... One second. Ah! Whoops. Okay. Zooming back and forth. You have to do it with the mouse wheel, so if you accidentally click it or uh, roll it, that's what happens. So this got a, uh, a plus one from having this red into the field. Now we're going to attack and confirm the attack. Excellent. Many creatures do much more than just attack and block. All right. So now we're finally on to the actual game. So we're going to play a land and play an elite vanguard. Now I'm going to get a drink of tea. We're going to play another land. Creatures you control get a plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So another instant we have, and a or Oresco's Swift Claw, Cat Warrior. So we're going to play that. All right, and so it does look like we can. Uh, some some quick damage in right there. And then we have this that we can use to block if need be. This creature can block creatures with flying. Alright. Canopy spider. And there's actually a... Uh, a bigger version of this card that can uh, block seven creatures in total. It's it's crazy. I don't know if it's on uh, Magic Duel, but I know if the uh, actual card version, because I used to have it. Actually, I think I still do. So we're going to play another Planes. Creatures you control. So we're going to... Wait. Whenever it attacks, gains a plus one, plus one to the end of turn. So I think I'm going to leave this, but I'm most definitely going to attack with this. And even if he doesn't defend it, even if he doesn't defend it, we can still get some damage done. Wonderful. Let's see if he plays anything. Fleshman Steed. Whenever another creature dies, tap Fleshman Steed. It's actually not too bad. At least I don't think so. Could always use it to their advantage. Gonna play another planes. Charging Griffin again and inspiring captain. Inspiring captain enters the battlefield. Creatures of control gain a Plus one, plus one until the end of turn. So that's not bad. That's a uh, four cost, so two four costs. So we're gonna play that, and we'll be able to pass right over him. Wonder why it's telling us to attack with that. It's a ah. I see why, but 
my only thought is... No, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. That doesn't seem, doesn't seem very beneficial for us to attack with, uh, with that right there. Another spider. Not, not the best thing in the world. A creature that has double strike deals damage twice in combat. Once when creatures deal first strike damage. And again when creatures deal regular damage. It is possible for a creature to be destroyed before it can deal its combat damage. What is that? Is that? Ah, spear... Sky Spear Cavalry. Double Strike. This creature deals both first strike and regular combat damage. Interesting, but it is a, uh, a five cost, and we don't have five yet. So we'll play another Inspiring Captain. All of those get a bonus. And I do agree with their assumption on this one. I think we should attack. Let's see what they're gonna do. We're gonna stop the timer real quick. No, this would this would be wonderful if uh, if any of these had trample on it. That'd be that'd be downright amazing. But, well, actually, trample in first strike, I think, is... No, just trample. Just tra Although... No. Alright, so we're gonna continue. Did a little bit of a, uh, damage to the harpy. Now just canopy uh, spider is left, and these two are tapped. So what did he bring out? Creature Gorgon. All right. When Farka's yeah Farka's Mender enters the battlefield, you may return target creature or enchanted enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. I wonder what they're planning on doing with that. That seems uh, a little frightening. That's uh, that's not so good. Creature you control get a plus one, plus one until the end of turn. And why? I suppose for that. Interesting. So, actually, yes, I'm going to continue and wait for them to block, and then I'm going to play Glorious Charge. And I agree, yeah, we should probably leave him out of this. We're going to confirm the attack, wait for them to block if they choose to. Just gonna wait, so they're blocking that. Easily deal with that, and they're blocking that, and that can easily deal, but does that do? It's plus one, plus one. I think we can save that, to be honest. Well, I suppose it does give that a little bit of a boost, but I don't think that doesn't have trample or anything so yeah we're just going to continue the these will get destroyed that will go through and we can save that the instant all right and play yeah i agree i agree we should play that it's not like they have anything on their field so far 
This is flying and don't. Yeah, okay, okay. Let's see, what is this? When Forsaken Drifter dies, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Interesting. So it seems like they're trying to get more into their graveyard so they can use more. So do we have anything with three? I don't. I don't like that. Although, if they block with that, I think it'll still deal damage, which isn't bad. So that's a four, and that's a two. When we play that, it's not like it can do anything this turn anyway, so I think we're going to stick with this. We're going to continue. Attack with all, confirm attack, and we're going to use that when we get a chance. So that's blocking that, and that will kill that, but that'll also kill that, and that's blocking that. And then the rest of these are dealing damage, and I definitely think now is the time to use that. That'll boost up the creatures that are dealing damage. their sleeve. All right, so, yeah, it's our turn. I forgot about that. And plus one, plus one. Flying. We only have five. So yeah, I agree. We should go with that. And that'll give these guys a boost for when we go in and attack. And this will seal the victory for us. Hopefully, anyway, depending upon if they have any instants or any such things. Nope. Wonderful. Pretty good, pretty good, guys. Kytheon wins. We got a 190 for gold. When your martial talents and magical skills, with your martial talents and magical skills, you manage to fend off the onslaught of the Horius Harpies. However, you hear calls for help from the main gate. Before the Harpies can regroup, you make your, you make your way along the walls toward the cries. Continue. All right. That was a pretty good one, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I definitely did. Uh, if you did enjoy the episode, make sure to click the like button. If you really enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe. And I will be back soon with the next one, guys. Cheers.